So, good afternoon, everybody, and good morning for uh, who is following us from Italy. It is a pleasure to be here, and thank you for inviting me in this very important session. So, my name is uh, uh, Danilo Pesce. I'm a research fellow in Politecnico di Torino and a visiting research fellow in CAS Business School in London. My background is in management. I got a PhD in management, so I'm not an expert in art. I fell into this by chance, but I'm loving it. And in the next 15 minutes, I would like to quickly show you how digital technology can support cultural and higher educational institutions in responding, uh, overcoming, and preventing the ongoing health emergency by supporting new forms of uh, resilience. So uh, just to start, uh, a little bit of data. The cultural and creative sector are among the industries affected the most by the current coronavirus crisis. And cultural institutions are not uh, an exception. So 90% of both public and private cultural institutions closed uh, during the crisis, and more than 10% may never open again. And from the educational side, uh, it's pretty much the same. 91% of school students are experiencing sh uh, school shutdown. So the interruption of tourism activities and the potential extension of health uh, restriction can make this data even more dramatic in the long run. So just uh, to, to explain the situation in Italy, the Italian National Institute of Statistics has estimated that the lockdown caused the loss of nearly 19 million visitors between March and May 2020, and the loss of approximately 78 million euros. So uh, the ongoing pandemic emergency required a strategic rethinking and a reconfiguration of activities and processes in the cultural and educational context of heritage-related discipline, and the digital technology can help us. But what happened? So to cope with the unexpected shock of losing the physical contact with the public, most cultural organizations resorted to a massive digital communication strategy, generally improvised and only aimed at proposing a remediation, a sort of remediation of activities traditionally carried out in physical museum space. So for instance, the virtual tours. And on one hand, this unveiled the limits of the traditional object-centered museum model, which has been considered to be ill-equipped to the possibility of advancing its institutional mission beyond the physical presence of visitors. It was the same for educational without physical presence of students. And on the other hand, this highlighted how the sudden change in how people resort to culture has made digital technology a strategic asset both for cultural and, edu and uh, educational institutions. So to replace, uh, to release a specific new form of public engagement and to explore the, possibi the, possi uh, the possible application of digital to replace uh, the in-class session and to deal with the field work and practicum that are activities that are no longer allowed within the pandemic context. So the problem is how to translate the new digital content created by cultural institution into effective teaching and learning experience in the educational context. So essentially, digital technologies have enabled two ways of teaching and learning cultural heritage during uh, the COVID pandemic. So first of all, we can count on tight collaboration with cultural institutions in sharing teaching resources and exchanging knowledge. This kind of collaboration enables high knowledge and content depth, uh, since the cultural institutions are the temple of knowledge, uh, which can be conveyed by higher educational institutions that by definition are the forum through which this knowledge can be fought and learned. However, this collaboration requires high, uh, high coordination mechanism between cultural and educational institutions for the preparation of content and the related storytelling, but especially the, nece the necessary condition that uh, such content has already been digitized, so for instance, online collection or workable virtual tour. The other way is to adopt a new innovative teaching model using digital platforms. So for instance, we have uh, for the worldwide cultural heritage, we have Google Arts and Culture, or for the European cultural heritage, we have Europeana. So digital platforms that enable high knowledge breadth, more than depth, and in terms of content and cross-continent connection, but also enable new ways of teaching and learning knowledge by experimenting at the edge of the digital frontier. So let me just give you, I will start with the, the collaboration with cultural institutions. Let me just give you a couple of examples of two collaborations that I personally had with two cultural institutions from UNESCO networks that are also among the UNESCO partners that join forces against the COVID-19. So at our Egyptian Museum in Italy and the Van Gogh Museum 
in the uh, Netherlands. So this is the amazing platform that UNESCO created during the lockdown to explore initiatives and stories from UNESCO network. Uh, let me just start with a bit of storytelling. So for a model of digital transformation in cultural heritage that I did for the master in the World Heritage and Cultural Projects, I planned a visit to the Egyptian Museum. So because of the COVID, we had a virtual classroom, but of course the tour was cancelled. So since all the ladies and gentlemen in the class were very excited about the visit at the Egyptian Museum, and thanks to an ongoing collaboration that in Polytechnico we have the, uh, with the museum, I called the curator, Enrico, asking for moving the physical visit into a digital one. It was possible only because the Egyptian Museum already digitized its collection and because of the great competence of the curator, Enrico, in creating the perfect storytelling around the virtual tour. So for the Egyptian Museum, it was the first four hours tour erogated in a digital way, and it was a success. So let me show a short video of this experience. Here we are, at, are uh, at the top floor of the Egyptian Museum. As you can see, the museum is fully navigable. And uh, let me just uh, go to the virtual unwrap section of the exhibition. Uh, here we have interactive uh, touch screen that allow users to look deep inside the Egyptian sarcophagus. So at uh, this digital counterpart, what is called the, the digital twin, was generated through computer tomography, a lot of technology. And uh, my students in that case were able to see inside the coffins and retrieve information about the surface and texture of the mummies, as well as the jewelry. And in this way, Enrico's knowledge generated using technology, advanced technology for research purposes, become accessible to my students even during a pandemic lockdown. Another example comes from the Van Gogh Museum, where we studied the museum digital transformation process from 1995 <coughs> sorry, to 2020. And it's a process of 25 years of uh, organizational and strategic transformation of the museum. Uh, this is the bedroom, and this is the, us uh, the usual exhibit that uh, we find, that we can find in the gallery next to the painting. So we have just a few lines of description with the core content. But if we move on the website, we have the same exhibit with more content. We have cross-continent connection, we have the research in progress, and we have also the hyperlink. Hyperlink in this case to the letter that uh, Van Gogh wrote to his brother Theo that are stored in the back end of the museum so are not available in the gallery and not visible by visitors because of their extreme, extreme fragility. So we have on the web the original text, we have the translation, we have the, cura the curatorial notes. Uh, this is just to say, here we have the summary of the study that we did about the coevolution between digital and organizational change at the museum in 25 years. I don't want to bother you with the challenges in your organizing activities. Just to say that it's extremely easy to adopt digital technology, but it's extremely difficult to incorporate and leverage the capabilities that te digital technology can offer. So, for instance, uh, we can use technology to increase the outreach through social media channels. Let me give a, a couple of examples. Here we have a post published on Facebook by the Van Gogh Museum in 2012. They discovered something about the sunflower. This is the post. And they simply said, if you want to know more about this discovery, you can find the full paper. And this is the link. So this is a knowledge pushing approach. What happened in 2019? So this is what you can see. What do you want to know about our sunflower research? And the curator will answer your question, the professor will answer your question, and the conservator will answer your question. So content are created by research department, are reinterpreted by the education department, and recombined with digital communication team. And this redesign process took 25 years. The second way of teaching and learning cultural heritage during COVID is using digital platform. So I choose to talk about the leading cultural heritage platform worldwide, that is Google Arts and Culture, that is a non-profit initiative funded by Google in 2011 that collaborates with museums, galleries, and cultural organizations around the world. So I think more or less uh, 1,800 cultural organizations. And the mission is to bring the world's art and culture online so it's accessible to anyone, anywhere, and for free. So here we are in the Van Gogh Museum, but on the Google Arts and Culture platform. As you can see, you can uh, see all the collection of the museum, but you can also go inside the museum. So you can walk uh, through the uh, corridor of the museum, through the room. You can jump from one floor to another. And here we are in front of, uh, again, again, in front of the bedroom. 
and uh, by clicking on the painting, you can see the background in a very different way because Google developed a technology called the Gigapixel through which user can zoom into a brushstroke level image of details through the platform. So let's see how specifically the technology works. User can zoom into a brushstroke level of images composed of 1 billion pixels. So this is approximately 1,000 times more details than the average digital uh, camera. So it's a new way for studying arts that is not possible in the brick and mortar gallery. Of course, the real thing is always better, but here we have new user experience and new meaning in knowledge dissemination and thus in teaching and learning experience. You can search painting and artworks by popularity or by historical events or by colors. And you can also use tags using neural network that automatically applies text labels to image pixel. So it uses picture recognition to sort the artworks by keyword. So you can search for something that is within a picture in a novel way, for instance, calm, and it brings a new way to browse cultural heritage. But Google has also been injecting machine learning and artificial intelligence into some of its products. And now it's mixing, it's mixing with art to create a new interactive experience. So the results are a, seri a series of experimental works that introduce new ways to interact with art. For instance, here we have the oldest art artwork in the world, 233,000 years before Christ. And you can do a cultural Big Bang where mathematical formulas are used to place the artworks in a 3D environment, where you can choose to visualize what the cultural Big Bang might look like or travel through the sea of the artworks. And this allows users to interact with the artworks and identify patterns at scale. Let me give you another couple of examples. Another feature is about taking students on a time travel. So with, um, with the British uh, Museum, with a collaboration between the British Museum and Google, students can explore the Museum of the World's timeline and choose an artifact they would like to learn more. So the one that I selected here, and you can select artifacts from any continent, is uh, the Atomic Apocalypse from America. But uh, of course, you can move across the timeline and you can choose several artifacts. So here it is the silver bowl from the Byzantine Empire from Europe. And by clicking, you can see where the heritage came from. You have the description, the cross-related objects, and the storytelling developed directly from the curators of the British Museum. A third kind of experiment is about using technology for embracing the future to preserve the past. Here we are, you can see how technology is used to document and preserve an ancient site devastated by earthquake. Here we are in the UNESCO heritage site of Pagan that features over 2,200 Buddhist temples and pagodas. And Pagan is an earthquake zone and uh, with the most recent quake in 2016, and users and students can travel through the landscape and inside the created temple at risk of collapse while learning the ancient story uh, they tell. Uh, I will just give you a glimpse on how digital technologies and virtual reality can be used to bring back the life heritage and in this specific case, an extinct reptile. Its bones are on display in the museum and are now being brought to life in virtual reality. So in partnership with Google, the Natural History Museum put flesh and skin over the ancient bone. They used the laser scanning to capture the building and the reptile itself. They virtually flooded the gallery with water so the huge reptile could swim through the gallery. And now we can see how it looked, moved, and uh, uh, behaved. X degrees of separation is another tool that tried to answer the question, what is the connection between any two artworks? So you just ask, what is the path between Starry Night and some 5,000 year old sculpture. And it actually find a connection with the usually surprising, interesting, and open up chance for discovery. Another uh, super interesting way to exploring heritage through selfies is a feature called Portrait make Matcher. And this is me the day before my PhD dis uh, dissertation, as you can see from my ear. You can create user engagement by connecting mm -hmm. people to art through selfies. So by inviting people to discover portrait art history. And the result is amazing. In a couple of days, people have taken more than 30 million selfies 
And this is one of the best examples of using gamification strategy to engage people by inspiring interest. And of course, you can use your pixel, but also other ones. So what about uh, intangible cultural uh, heritage? All what I showed you is about tangible cultural heritage, but uh, all of this can be applied to teaching and learning intangible cultural heritage too, or can also be applied in other totally different business contexts, so for instance, the business of fashion. But let's talk about intangible cultural heritage, where digital platform can be used for teaching and learning intangible cultural heritage, for instance, by discovering unseen craft and nearly forgotten Chinese artists and explore the art of Chinese craft. So let me just conclude with this short video about the arts of Chinese crafts. So, and the platform is plenty of this kind of exhibition here. For instance, we are preserving the Afghan heritage, but uh, I'm going to the conclusion. So I totally agree with what Neil, Crystal, and Nick showed before me in previous presentation. The point is that digital is a powerful tool, but cannot be just dumped in the cultural or educational institution. So independently from the new ways of teaching and learning cultural heritage, uh, digital technologies must you, cultural institution and educational institution must build a digital core for the strategic rethinking and reconfiguration of activities and process in order to develop a new paradigm for the relationship between teaching and learning, between on-site and online, and between digital experience and cultural heritage artifacts to cope and uh, uh, to cover the, to manage the cultural health emergency. So, the answer is going back to strategy and the basic understanding of how to create and capture value through the use of digital technology. Specifically, we should be able to answer these four questions. Who is the audience, students or visitors ind independently, and who is not? So what, changes, uh, what change did the audience undergo during the COVID-19 pandemic? And how did it leave the learning experience when the digital channels replaced the brick and mortar experience? Or the second point, what is the value proposition and what are you not doing? So do you have the cultural institution to collaborate with? Does the cultural institution have the collection still digitized and the skills to create different kinds of storytelling or using digital platform may be better? How to deliver the value in a seamless way, bridging the physical and the digital world? And what are the new indicators that university and cultural institutions should take into account? And what is the good receipt in the profit formula to capture value? So how we can respond, overcome and prevent the health emergency while balancing cultural betterment with economic sustainability. So the possible winning formula is, uh, first of all, in light of the current health emergency and the increase in online participation, the success of cultural and education institution can no longer be evaluated through structured quantitative approach. In this context, there is a need to take into account the micro-sociological aspect linked to the perception of the change in the audience in order to develop a new set of qualitative metrics and to develop a new class of on-demand educational products and services to manage the current health emergency and to prevent the effects of the new lockdown measures. And we just started to work on this new set of qualitative metrics with the Egyptian Museum with the goal to put cultural and educational institutions to list them to their audience. And finally, to cope with the fact that we are losing the physical contact with our audience, is even more necessary to combine digital assets and physical assets to address new connected and dynamic user needs, both students and visitor needs. So I'm done. Sorry, I went a little bit out of time. Um, thank you for your time. And uh, 
let's hope that we will go back to stay together soon, physically, into the real world and not uh, into the digital world. So thank you very much.